Ooh. Here we go, everybody. Come on in, join us. NXT, a little overtime tonight. It is in the books. I am Matt Camp. Welcome in. We'll let you get all fired up here. Get in here after what we just saw take place. I don't know, somewhere in Florida or wherever Triple H got it going. But we are ready to go. I'm going to bring in Evan Mack right now. Joining me here because uh, we got to talk some NXT. Uh, Evan should be joining me here. There he is. We are good to go. What up, brother? How you doing, man? We ready to go? Ready for yeah. this? Yeah. Locking a little camera yeah. around so I can look uh, like you see the words and all that stuff because I care about that. Here we go. Lock, all right. Lock and loaded. We are good to go. Everybody is here. Welcome in to our fans and new people alike. Uh, Matt Camp, Evan Mack from The Bump. All right, here we go. So, Evan, um, Candle Saray is a faithful wife. That's what I just learned. Now, it's all about loyalty, baby. It's all about <laughs> loyalty. It's about, about standing by your man. You a married man. She, your wife is loyal. She's by your side. I think she'd do the same thing for you tonight. Well, they, they kind of faked everybody out. They, 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 so, <laughs> so here's what happened. And, and thank you for all for joining us here. Coming out of NXT, we'll be with you until about 10.30, 10.35-ish Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. So give us 30 minutes here. We'll be with you as well. Talking all things NXT. <coughs> they drive up to wherever. It looks somewhere in the Orlando area. They drive up there. Candace, very nice, as you said. Drives her man up there. <laughs> gives him a, a brown paper bag. I'm like, did she pack him a lunch? Did she make him a cupcake? She makes world famous cupcakes. What I think was in there, Evan, was what Johnny was wearing when he got kicked low, <laughs> which was some kind of uh, below the equator protective um, uh, uh, device. And it faked everybody out. And Tommaso was like, oh, I, maybe I really messed up this marriage. No, you didn't. No, no, no. No. They might have messed other things up, but. Oh boy! So, but no, but yeah, no. It's just you know, it's it was it's a, it's protective gear, Matt Camp. You know, what I mean, he's an athlete. You know, and it was protected. You know, he probably went to Dick Sporting Goods. Knew it was going to be a grueling match, a tough match. You know, just wanted to protect himself. I don't. I think this was all happenstance. Okay, so <laughs> they fight. Here, here is, I haven't worn one of those since I played second base when I was like I twelve years old. I know. <laughs> I don't think it's a regular part of the attire, but maybe for that match, the... it should have been. The so old Johnny club. wins. They ring. They they rip up the ring. We saw that in the past. That's a takeover. A uh, callback to the past that has happened with them before. They're fighting on trucks. We saw Edge and Orton fighting on trucks three nights ago at WrestleMania at NXT. And you know there were elements that felt like that if you've been following this for all the years that it's gone on, you went, oh, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. And in the end, it was Candice who was kind of. You know, we've seen her at the ramp after matches with the hugs and all that, but she's kind of stayed out of the physicality of all this, Evan, and now she steps in, and while Johnny has gone to another side, you know, when Candice qualified for that ladder match, we'll get into that, uh, she was asked about that by Johnny Quasto, and, and she kind of blew it off. She didn't want to talk about it. She finally got involved, and she was the deciding factor in what was a long knockdown, drag-out battle, in the ring, out of the ring, outside, back inside. So she's the deciding factor in what is what we were told. Triple H said it. That's the end for these two men. Yeah, and I think she sensed that as well. I think she said, if this is going to be an, if this is gonna be an ending, I'm, I'm going to get involved, and I'm going to make sure my man gets the victory. If, if, he, if he's but like this, like the, the last resort, the lifeline, so to speak, and who wants to be a millionaire, you know what I mean? That That's last it, yeah. lifeline. And she was like, you know what? I think it's about that time. We got this little backup plan, and we're going we're gonna to end this. So it, it's over as far as we know, but uh, yeah. as I, I look back and, and watch everything they went through there, um, I hope it's over for, for their standpoint. I mean, I don't know what this means for Johnny, but Johnny has taken on a new life. And uh, to me, when I saw this all go down and, and restart, I guess you would say, at NXT TakeOver Portland, when Johnny cost Tommaso the NXT Championship and Adam Cole, baby, still has that championship. We'll talk about him later on as well. Um, it was a different feeling to me about Johnny, uh, Johnny Gargano. And I was like, ah, Johnny can't be mean. I, I can't believe in that. And then over the last couple of months, I went, oh, yeah, he, he's gone somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, Evan, you know who I feel like he's channeling is his hero. I feel like there is some, some Shawn Michaels 
when Shawn Michaels was not at his most likable in what we're seeing from Johnny Gargano. By the way, that was a very successful Shawn Michaels. Yeah, man, I like that. That's old poofy here, Shawn Michaels, with the dangly <laughs> earrings. Shawn Michaels. That's right. That that rascal. That he was. Listen, as as malicious as he was, he was he, he was at his apex during some of those moments. Like now, we can pick any version of HBK we like, but that that feels like shades of old HBK right there. That was like when you had to go somewhere else. You know what? I, yeah. I've helped the people out long enough. I'm taking I'm taking this for me. Obviously, having Candace by his side only helps there. Uh, so I don't know what's next for these two men, but that was that went on for a very long time. They're yeah. going to both be feeling that, Evan, as well. I don't think either guy is going to be jumping right back up in NXT next Wednesday. Like, all right, I'm next. Who's not? Nobody. Yeah. Neither one of them will be in any shape to be right back out there contending at the highest level next Wednesday. I see someone in the chat said, what's next for Champa? So what, what do you think? Based on what you just said, but what is next for Champa? Uh, you know, I, I, this is one of those where you lick the wounds, you collect your thoughts. Johnny was trash talking him the whole time saying, you know, uh, <laughs> how many surgeries was it? And that is something that you have to think about. Uh, our own from the bump, Ryan Popola, was talking about this with Edge, right? He said, for everything that's going into this, as fired up as Edge is and his wife and coming back, he's coming back from two neck surgeries. He got his head concertoed the night after Royal Rumble. He had to prove that he was over all those things and mm. came back from all those things. He did it. He won. Mm. He beat Randy Orton last man standing match. I don't know what kind of shape Tommaso Ciampa is in after tonight. And that, I think, is the bigger question. Who knows when we'll see him again? I hope right. nothing got worse. But, man, he has been through a bunch the last couple of years in the midst of this whole thing. So I, I think Johnny obviously now can say, I, I ended this. Uh, I can jump right back into the NXT championship picture, a North American title, whatever. Johnny whatever. can say, Evan, whatever he wants yeah. because he is proven as a, a cornerstone in the history of NXT. Like, why, why, why wouldn't he be able to write his own ticket? Why wouldn't he be able to say, I'm going after this title? Well, Triple H would have to be like, you know what? <laughs> like, sure. Hey, he did. they followed what Triple H said. Triple H was hanging there in the corner just waiting for him. He said, when I walk out this door, you go. You start. And I was surprised. We'll move on from this in a second. <laughs> I was surprised how long. These two kept it in a ring. I know Triple H said it had to be finished there, but they kept it in there. Uh, but it, it, it stayed in there longer than I expected, but then oh, it absolutely. went elsewhere. The thing is, I go, both of these men, unbelievable in-ring technicians. They might have just said, you know what? This is my best chance to win this thing. I don't want to go out there. I don't want to get chairs and other things involved. We knew that was going to happen at some point. But it stayed in the ring for a pretty long time I, I just wondered possibly if these guys one of them maybe wanted to end it quickly yeah and that was that's what the, the, the thought process was and I think they just started letting the momentum take them wherever they wanted to go and then started realizing that since this has no boundaries and I, I'll do whatever it takes the ref was behind them like I'll do whatever it takes yes. to get this get this over with and, and like you said it ended up we're, we're on top of trucks man we're going all we're, we're going all over the place but it spent, it, there was a lot of time spent in the squared circle, man. I thought that was really, really telling about them really trying to finish it in the ring. Well, it finished in the ring, and the ring was ripped up and all that, and, and Johnny <laughs> was uh, successful in that ending NXT. Well, they, uh, did the ring, they, they did the ring crew's work for him, though. At least they didn't have the – you know what I mean? The there, ring there it was a, a, yeah, it's probably like 95% of, of the job <laughs> still has to be done. But they did some of it for them. It's yeah. a good point there. So they had to go set that thing up. And Triple exactly. like, show up here. This is where you wrestle. I'll bring the crew. They'll be gone. They're they there broke right it now. down. Like, well, at least think they did something for us. Uh, let's take you back to the beginning of the show. We were definitely in full sail to start the show. It was the number one contender ladder match for the NXT Women's Championship. And... That is a title, as we saw this past week, and now held by Charlotte Flair once again, 11 times. She has been a women's Ooh. champion in WWE. And now we know, Evan, and you called this today on the bump. I, I was, I'm not mad at it at all. I thought Candice was going to win it. But Io Shirai coming out on top. And Io Shirai tweeted about this uh, earlier in the day. She talked about this, as Morrow said, before she even got to NXT, that this was the match she wanted, and she's getting that match, Evan. Yeah, and it's interesting because I think Io is the best wrestler in the world, I'll be honest with you. And it's she, but she's going up against perhaps 
the best wrestler of her generation. You know what I mean? So it's it's very interesting. And be careful what you wish for. And as, as much as as happy as I am that EO won this match, and I just like to see her in these kind of matches. Charlotte is a is a tough customer, man. Yeah, she's a tough. I don't even know where you begin to scout. I don't know where you start thinking about it. Is she thinking ahead? Should she start thinking right now? Should she start looking at tape right now? Matt, should she enjoy this victory? What 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 mindset should she be in right about now? Charlotte's like, let's go, because she tweeted right after the match. She said, "Oh, you want a ladder match? Your reward is a figure eight. Congratulations?" Question mark. That's what she said. I don't know. <laughs> And you could throw Becky Lynch in this conversation. We talked to Drew McIntyre today. He could be in this conversation. I don't know if anyone is more sure of themselves and more comfortable at the top of the mountain because of how long she has done it and how long she has done it and done it well than Charlotte Flair. So yeah. I don't think she would have cared who won that match. No. Because after what she did this weekend, I'll go out and say this. I thought Charlotte Flair had the best match of her career this past weekend at WrestleMania. And she's had big-time WrestleMania matches before because I think people probably put that Asuka match from a couple of years ago in that conversation. You. I thought this match this past weekend, all things considered, was the best match of her, her career. So she's ready, Evan. Hard to argue that, man. It was it – because was Rhea gave her all she, she can handle. For a, from a physicality standpoint, from a competence standpoint, from a skill standpoint, and Charlotte came out on top, 11-time champion, quickly nipping at her father's heels, by the That's way. Right. That's nipping. right. That's <laughs> right. You know, I didn't think of that. I, I probably should have, but, I mean, five is a long number. At the same time, she'd probably go, I, I would like to be 11 and never be less than 11 or more than 11 because exactly. I'll be the champion forever. I mean, it's an <laughs> achievement. But you still got to lose it that many times. Exactly. But that's the thing. <laughs> she always comes back. Just like her dad, she always comes back. Um, I thought the athleticism between the two, that's where Rhea could truly match her. Um, you know, the, the experience, uh, the skill level. I think Rhea's still learning all that. She's really rolling right now, as we saw. This was the first bump in the road she's had in like six or seven months. True. But from that athletic, athleticism standpoint, which Charlotte talked about on the bump leading into it, uh, on, on every one of her media appearances, she's like, I, I can see where Rhea matches me there. But yes. Charlotte matched her. She was ready to go. She wins. We'll see her and Io Shirai. But just going back to this match, Evan, the choke slam power bomb combination by Tegan Knox and Mia Yim um, on Raquel Gonzalez was man. brutal. Oh, my God, man. Um, unbelievable to see, man, um, Dakota and Tegan and – and Mia Yim had an impressive showing as well. And just to see what these women are willing to do to get an opportunity to yeah. face the champion. This was just for an opportunity. This was a briefcase. This wasn't even the title. So it was just a beautiful thing to see. Uh, we'll ask you guys, who do you think wins this? When we see Io Shirai face Charlotte Flair for the NXT Women's Championship, who do you think wins that matchup? I don't know when it's going to happen, but uh, I I'm excited to see what that can be. We talked a lot about it today on this week's episode of The Bump, which you go back and watch on demand, or you can watch it on Twitter, Instagram, or anywhere you want, YouTube. You can go check it out, WWE Network as well. But this was what I was talking about. The, the new fresh opponents for Charlotte, EO now at the top of that list. Uh, Chelsea Green, we saw them in uh, Battle on Raw a couple of months ago. Mm. Different Chelsea Green now. Mia Yim. Um, Evan, Mia Yim is an interesting one to me because before Mia Yim was signed and under a WWE contract, I believe her first NXT match was against Charlotte Flair. And those two have talked about that potentially Crazy. happening again. And look where they both are now. It's, it's, it's great to see, man. And um, to see her progress and see how far she's come. I um, mean, I'm carving her away in, in, this, in this industry. And, and it's really impressive to see. I'm, I'm curious to see what's next for her as well. Um, like I said, I think she gets better and better every time she's in the ring. Um, always has a moment, I think, in the ring. So I, I, I'm curious to see what's next for Mia. You know? And it's, it's just... It's just so much, so much talent on this roster, bro. I don't, I just don't know where where to go sometimes. Uh, we also heard Adam Cole address Velveteen Dream from, uh, I assume, his palatial uh, covered up estate. Cause you gotta have, you gotta have the big dome over your pool because you don't want to have mosquitoes. You, you gotta save yourself. You gotta have your social distancing from everything when you are the champion, <laughs> NXT champion, Adam Cole. Um, we did not hear Mr. Regal talk about that today when he joined us on the bump. And I want to get to what he did say in just a second here. Mm. But I, I, I'm, I'm still wondering, has Velveteen Dream done enough in your eyes, Evan, to earn a championship opportunity 
Adam Cole. The last time we saw him in the ring, he defeated Bobby Fish. First things first, man, Mr. Cole himself said on the Instagram Live that he's done nothing, nothing, I repeat, nothing to deserve a chance at the title. Now, he said, with that being said, he doesn't want to take anything away from the dream. If, if that happens, he'll fight the dream, face the dream, beat the dream. But he says he has done nothing. That's from the horse's mouth. Uh, do I think Dream has done enough? I think throughout his rise, his rise to, to power before he was taken out by the UE, he I think he did I think he did do enough. So so I'm kind of kind of thinking about it based on before they put him out of commission. I think this I think it's time I think it's his time to have a, a match for the NXT Championship. I think he's got to do a little more. Just that's me. He did that's lose fair. that match that's to Roddy. Um, but but if it's not him, then who is it? Is a question, and and we'll, we'll see about that. Um. I will ask you guys here, as you're in the comments, did has is Velveteen Dream in your mind? Should he be the number one contender to Adam Cole's NXT Championship? And if it's not Velveteen Dream, Ooh. leave another name in there in the comments because yeah. I love I want to know what that is. So when Mr. Regal joined us on the bump today, he had breaking news. So he, he was a very busy man. He had the grandfather clock behind him. Uh, he had to get to work because <laughs> he has some decisions to make and. He did address the absence of Pete Dunne, who we know cannot uh, cannot defend the NXT Tag Team Championships right now because he's in the UK and cannot get over to America. Um, so he said that will be addressed at a later date. He's t- still trying to figure out what's going to happen there. But he did say this, because Jordan Devlin cannot defend the Cruiserweight Championship, there will be a tournament to determine, and this is a key phrase here, Evan, an interim NXT Cruiserweight mm-hmm. Champion. So to, just to start there with that term, interim is saying he is not being stripped of the title, Jordan Devlin. No. But when he can defend, I would assume he will get the winner of this tournament. Now, that brings into play one of my favorite things in all of pro wrestling, in all of WWE, in all of sports statement. You give me a tournament, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, it's the king of the ring, any tournament. I don't care what it is. Um, the, the Irish ace was on Twitter and not very happy. Um, not very happy about the decision. With that being said, he's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And for me, a guilty pleasure of mine is the tournament just like it is yours. So I'm all for it. Interim being the operative word gives a lot of opportunities to a lot of people, but the Irish ace is not happy. None too pleased. No, uh, and I'm sure he's not happy that he can't go anywhere like many of us are, but he wants to defend that championship. Whether you agree with his attitude or not, He's a fighting champion. He's, oh, yeah. He, uh, he is a hell of an athlete. He's a hell of a performer. And, and he is a champion that that title means everything to him because of what it took to get there to have it. So now that he can't defend that title, he's going to see someone else become the interim champion. It's got to eat at him <laughs> because you know he's not ducking anybody. No. And that's the thing. He is so good. So now, Evan, I saw Leo Rush tweet about it. I saw Tony Nice tweet about it. Yeah. I saw Swerve tweet about it. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there's a few names out there that did, did not speak up that I'm thinking of. <laughs> um, we've seen a few people get taken away in yeah. an SUV the last couple of weeks. <laughs> no, no. Where are they? <laughs> uh, Joaquin Wild. I don't, I don't know if they're going to be involved. But, Impressive. Um, before I ask you, I'll throw this out to our comment section here. Who do you think will become the interim NXT Cruiserweight champion? Who's going to win this tournament, Evan? I'll throw it out to you. Who do you got? Who's who's at least the favorite to win this whole thing? Yeah, yeah I like Swerve, man. I, I'm a big fan of Isaiah Swerve. I think he's done done a lot to he, rise raise his stock, so to speak. Man, who, but that's a great day. That's a good question, brother. Man, ah, who you got, man? That's the question. Check, check, man. check the check. The, oh, that, that's right. Kushida's in NXT, and Kushida will become your interim oh, he's a problem. NXT Cruiserweight <laughs> champion. Oh, I agree with that 100%. That's my guy. That's my favorite going back years. Uh, he has had uh, plenty of experience in, in, in this kind of field against these kind of competitors. He could do it against anybody. He was on a roll anybody. anyway. Last time Japanese I phenom, these, baby. He's the man. I love Kushida. Hoverboard lock, you name it. He can put you away. <laughs> I said to Ryan poll i said i would actually call kushida the top contender to the north american championship right now that's how good i think he is because he can take on anybody so you know what why does it have to be just one maybe he could do both but i would say (laughs) with his experience factor and his skill if kushida is in this tournament and that's the thing we're we're kind of jumping ahead we don't know who is in this tournament 
But if you're telling me Kushida's in, I'm picking Kushida to be the NXT interim cruiserweight champion. That's hard to argue with that. It'd be, it'd be hard. I like Swerve. I don't know if Swerve got enough horses to take on Kushida. Kushida, a, he's a problem. He's a serious uh, problem. Uh, and then you wonder, you, you know, look around, um, when we see 205 Live involved, because the name I would think about there, who we typically see in tag team action, uh, only Lorkin, I feel like, is absolutely dangerous because he doesn't Man. care. He'll go in there, Evan, and he'll fight, and he'll say on Twitter if he loses, well, I got beat. I got my you-know-what kicked. I'm keeping it PG here for a 1023 Eastern here, but you know what he gotcha. says. You follow his Twitter. But that's a guy who will go in there, Evan, with absolutely no fear and someone who has not held that championship before. Yeah, one of the best at collar and elbow, man. I'm telling you, like, only like – but like this, when people face him, they know they're in for a fight. You can always tell when they're across the ring. They're like, all right, man. Okay, like, what, <laughs> what, what, what do I have to hit this dude with to beat him, man? So, win, lose, or draw, they know they've been in a fight with Oni. That's the one thing. They know. Oni Lorkin, uh, you think about Jack Gallagher, obviously, Ooh. in this conversation as Ooh. well. He's got a very different look. A lot, you know, he, he has changed everything about himself. Still um, a gentleman. Still a gentleman, I'm still told. Still a gentleman, maybe <laughs> to a point, but I feel like that might have been turned down a little it's bit true. there. It's true. So, there's a lot of options here, and, and uh, I'm seeing people say a lot of swerves, a lot of Leo Rush. Lot of Leo Leo, Rush. Leo's out there. Leo's got a lot going on. You know, he, he's been staying active. Uh, we haven't seen him in the ring as of late, but – He's on when, Twitter a lot. He's on Twitter. When, he's on yeah. social media. He's a busy man. But the good thing was is as soon as this came out, he was like, yeah, I, I've done that before. I want to do it again. Um, someone else who tweeted about this, another former champion, the man who lost that title, Angel Garza, who we have seen as of late on Raw, he just challenged for the Raw Tag Team titles Listen, at WrestleMania. But break, he threw a couple retweets out there this week about this. Breakthrough tournament, then all of a sudden, WrestleMania match for the Tag Team titles. The rise of Angel Garza. And don't, and don't get me wrong now, props to Selena Vega. Like I told you, she can, that she need to be a general manager of a, of a NFL team. Listen, <laughs> just put her, just put her, just put, put her in there for the draft. And they'd be like, who are you? She's like, just pick this, draft that guy, draft that guy, draft that guy, and then, and then trust me. And I'm telling you, man, you'd be surprised the results. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. She's like, she's like I would have drafted Brady in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> Zelina Vega running one of these virtual drafts, I, I think, is a home run. Because I know there's going to be old man GM in there going, yeah. how do you work this thing? I don't know how to draft this. She, she's got a YouTube. She's on Instagram. She can run all that stuff. If you gave the keys to anybody's team, yeah. business, organization, <laughs> cruiserweight championship, interim champion tournament, if you give it to Zelina Vega, I'm going to bet on her I'll that it's going to work out quite well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> So maybe, I don't know. Maybe, hey, who, I don't know. I, I don't know where this is going to go. Um, I'm excited <laughs> to see where it could go. We've we'll, we'll got to stay tuned. Uh, Mr. Regal said today on WWE's The Bub uh, that there will be more information on this on all of NXT's social platforms yes, uh, coming up soon. So that's what we know as of now. Um, you know, this week is, is a reset button of sorts. These were some takeover matches we've seen the last couple of weeks. Uh, were supposed to happen at TakeOver Tampa. Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, I, I feel like that's that's kind of all said and done with now. We, we know that Io Shirai is Charlotte's number one contender to her NXT Women's Championship. Johnny Gargano uh, finished off Tommaso Ciampa, at least when it comes to those two men tonight. Um, we're talking about now, we're going to find out who will become the NXT interim cruiserweight champion. Wow. We don't know about the tag titles, but one team that might be starting to think about this uh, as we learned their names tonight, we've kind of only gotten, you know, bits and pieces leading up to their first match. But Indu Shur, uh, Rinku and Sharav with, of course, Malcolm Bivens taking on Everrise tonight. And they got a W. And I, I don't think they're out there to be pretty, Evan. I don't no. think uh, these are guys that are going to be putting on beautiful wrist locks and, and master. They're out there to beat the crap out of you because they're bigger than you. And Malcolm Bivens, who you know I have always loved, of course. We're going to get him on the Day one, here. baby. Day one. You know it. Uh, when he can run his mouth and then two giant people behind him can back it up, that is a very dangerous combination. What a, what a first acquisition to Bivens Enterprises. It's like right out the gate, these two guys anchoring the Bivens Enterprises. Now I'm thinking, okay, what happens if he gets a couple more people? Uh, I have thought that. What, 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 
<laughs> because happens? if you ask him and the few words I've gotten out of him as of late, you know, I think he continues to look just like Zelina Vega continues to look yep. and why she is as good as she is. Vivens Enterprise is not, uh, to me, will probably not be about one tag team. I'm just guessing about that. Yeah. But this is a guy who has had success doing this his entire career, and he took about a year from the time he signed with WWE to find the right two people, to find his first signings of Bivens Enterprises. And I don't know if there were people that he didn't like along the way or they tried, but this is what he starts with. And where did he start at? He started at the top. They went after Matt Riddle, and they took out the NX, one half of the NXT Tag Team Champions. They did so when Pete Dunne was there to help him. That's smart, and that's shooting high. And why wouldn't you shoot high right now? Because I feel like the men who are always in contention, the Undisputed Era, if they don't have the titles, they're always after yeah. them. They're a bit preoccupied right now with Elton yeah. Dream. Yeah, and it's very interesting to see, man. I'm thinking to myself, whenever we get things back on track here, that the way you get yourself a number one contendership is to make a statement. Maybe you don't maybe you don't have to climb a ladder and go through so and so and so and so. Maybe you go to the people that have the title. Put, knock one of them out and be like, we, we want the match. They remind me of AOP in the earlier years, man, when AOP was running amok. But, but they, 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 seem, they seem determined to make a statement. But the difference between that is they have Malcolm Bivens. And Malcolm Bivens is – he, he, he got some goons with him, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, sometimes – I have heard that comparison as well to AOP, and they had Paul Ellering with them, and then there was Drake Maverick with them, and yeah. they really found their footing – I think as of late under Seth Rollins, under the guy, the look, the watchful eye, the experienced uh, Seth Rollins. But yeah, you go back to when AOP was in NXT, they won the tag team champions, a uh, championship under Paul Ellery. They beat DIY. My my goodness, uh, we force, know where that went. Brute force, athleticism, um, no nonsense. Like I said, they have one of the best mouthpieces in the business to speak for them. They don't need to speak. They they let their they let their actions speak. Malcolm Bivens handles the rest, and they just they just beat people up. Yeah, uh, we'll see where they go next. We'll see where things are going next with NXT. Because, hey, Malcolm, come on the bump anytime. We'd love to talk to you about this. We've, we've been trying. You know you have an open invite. Uh, next week we'll be with you, of course, on the bump Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, also, check out the podcast if you haven't yet. comes out Wednesday afternoons, uh, Eastern time. But you can uh, kind of listen if that's how you do it. They go, wait a minute, I wanted to see that. You can see beautiful things like, Mr. Regal sitting in front of the grandfather clock, giving us <laughs> NXT breaking news. You could see the new WWE champion, Drew McIntyre, hold up that championship. Have uh, Heath Slater. By the way, Evan, that might have been one of my favorite moments in about 30 episodes of The Bump, which will be 30 next week, was Heath Slater and Drew McIntyre conversing how much each man meant to each other. And for Heath to come on there and say, you know, I was watching this from home. And I woke my kids up clapping, and then my wife clapped. And um, you can see the love there is is very real for two guys who used to travel the roads together, and you see where they both are now. Uh, that was a pretty cool and very real moment we had on today's episode of the moment. Man, he's later though. He's a treasure, man. He really is. He's a delight, man. It's it's really good to see that real, honest joy that people have with Drew McIntyre, just because some of the people that have been on the road with him, that that grind with him, and seeing the ebbs yeah. and flows in this. This amazing run, like I said, and to do it and who he beat to do it. You know what I mean? The, the man, the man that entered Undertaker's streak, the man has been running amok for the past few years. And then just to see Heath Slater talk about him like that, man, I thought it was awesome. Go back and check that out if you didn't see it. Uh, also had Bubba Ray Dudley on to break down all <laughs> things WrestleMania, which was a lot of fun with him. Titus O'Neill joined us. He talked about taking over for Gronk as the host and reacted to the Firefly Funhouse match. All that there for you. Check it out uh, on this week's episode of WWE's The Bump every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Live. WWE Network, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us there. Evan's on the account right now, WWE The Bump, uh, and you won't miss a thing. Uh, nope. Also, coming up tomorrow, the Braxton Beat. She's got Becky Lynch here on Instagram tomorrow. That is a big one. So Thursday, Bananas. make sure you check it out. Braxton Beat, Kayla Braxton. And the WWE Raw Women's Champion, who just now passed, she's gone wire to wire and then some more than one year as the Raw Women's Champion, joining Kayla tomorrow, wow. Thursday, on the WWE Instagram account that we're on right now. And then Friday, I'll be back with Mackenzie Mitchell. 
10 p.m. Eastern, right after SmackDown. We'll react to all that. We'll find out what's going on in SmackDown. Evan, we saw Bianca Belair make her Raw debut, official debut this week. Who knows what could be happening on SmackDown because there's a new champ over there, and it's the Universal Champion, Braun Strowman. Man, staked stake their claim, made a, made a great statement. And it's very interesting to see because we talked about it, and we talked about who could be, who could be next in line and who can, who can buffer this roster, even though it's not like it needs it, but the EST is here now. Yeah. Now, now, now the ladies of NXT can breathe a sigh of relief that she's not breathing down their neck. <laughs> she's, she's hanging out Raw. I hope Kayla asks one Becky Lynch about Bianca Belair showing up on Raw. And maybe, who knows? I don't know what's going to happen on SmackDown. Maybe things will uh, – they, well, they won't stay as they were because Sami <laughs> Zayn defended his IC championship. John Morrison, in a triple threat singles ladder match, defended the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Maybe we'll find out more about Miz's status. And then, of course, Braun Strowman is your u- new universal champion. He won that match. I wanted to see because I was talking to you guys. Talk- he won that match in two minutes and ten seconds. That's a Goldberg number, Evan. But it was Goldberg coming out of the losing end for once. Yeah, this Braun Strowman guy, man. Oh, shout, oh, shout out to Bianca. Her birthday is tomorrow. Miss Bianca, there you go. Birthday. Happy birthday, Bianca. Um, Braun Strowman, dude, have you ever seen him more intense in a match? Truly, man, honestly. No, because he had to be, but he did it. That's the thing. You, you, you heard the story when he got the call about coming into that match. We know he wasn't originally scheduled for that match. He nope. came in there, had to make the trip back to get in there, gets in there with Goldberg. But you got to know, if I'm going to win this thing, either I get Goldberg past the five minutes or I have to weather the storm of what I know Goldberg is going to bring. And I tell you what, Goldberg is, is a little different than he used to be, Evan. Yeah. I think he knows. I'm going for Spears and Jack Cameron. I ain't worried about anything else. I ain't doing kicks. I ain't throwing no. suplexes. The two things I do the best are spears and jackhammers, and that's what I'm doing when I get in this ring. He tried that. Braun was ready for it. Braun hits those power slams, and Braun is your new universal champion. We'll talk more about that this Friday after SmackDown right here on Instagram. Myself, Mackenzie Mitchell, you always see on NXT. Yeah. Uh, That'll do it for us. Evan, always a pleasure. Pleasure Uh, all mine, brother. You got it, man. We'll see everybody next time. For Evan Mack, I'm Matt Camp. Thanks for joining us, and hope you enjoyed NXT.